Guys, got hair loss? I know what you're thinking. Should I shave my head, comb it over, wear a hat? Just stop. This is in 1970. Keep your hair and your confidence because Bosley, America's number one hair restoration experts, can give you your real hair back permanently. Check them out today because they're giving away an absolutely free information kit and a free gift card for anyone who goes to bosley.com. Dude, you don't have to look like your dad because this isn't your dad's hair loss treatment. People all over the country trust Bosley because they're ahead of the curve. They use the latest technology to give you your real hair back. And the best part? Bosley's permanent solution is protected by the Bosley Guarantee. Let Bosley show you for free how awesome your hair could look with an absolutely free information kit and a gift card for $250 off. Go to bosley.com. That's B-O-S-L-E-Y dot com. Bosley dot com. Daily Show, where I discuss news, nonsense, and my personal adventures. I believe it was one week ago where I sat here in front of you and I said, Yeah, I got to record a show for Compound. And I did that because I was I was reminded of that because E-Rock was in attendance and uh, I haven't done fuck. I will do that soon, though. I promise you. I wish I had more time. There was a time, actually, if you remember when I uh, spoke to you, uh, speaking directly to E-Rock, when I said, hey, I want to do it every day. I want to record a hot show every day. And I think you said, yeah, there's no way. There's no way you'd be able to pull that off. And I'm like, no, man, I'm a go-getter. I'm aggressive. Yeah, uh, Memorial Day weekend coming up. I got you. That's plenty of time. That's a month. A month. You've got it. I promise. I love doing shows for Compound Media. I love it because um, he says, I look forward to getting it June 1. Kenny says, put it in your calendar. It's not a matter of remembering. It's a matter of... Eh. Hang on a second. I'm looking for a puppy. Where the fuck are you? Hey! Oh, shit. Oh, there you are. Hi, honey. Oh, my God. Look at this. Look at this. She's getting big. You can hear her. uh, She's licking the mic. It sounds like sloppy vag. (laughs) Stupid. Oh, peanut. Oh, honey bunny. Oh, yes. Oh, my God. Uh, She's doing so good. Oh, my God. The dog is just... She benefits because I'm... uh, 
I'm here all the time, you know, uh, to take care of her and let her out and uh, teach her the way. She's biting the headphones now. Holy shit. No, she's a good dog. Uh, O'Neal doesn't, uh, he, he likes her when he, when he wants to, but for the most part, she sticks to, uh, she st uh, sticks to Bruce over there on the couch. Ow, 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 honey. No, no, no. Oh, just a baby. Oh my God. Okay. You relax over there. The NFL draft went down and what, what you uh, need to know about that stupid thing. Oh my God. First of all, I talked about this a little bit yesterday. If you go back to the Super Bowl, since the Super Bowl finished, they've been talking about the draft. Well, that's like, you know, two months, maybe three. I don't know. I think it's three. It's, it's a long time. And so everybody, uh, what they do online, and uh, they, they, they post mock drafts. This is who the definitive mock draft to these teams. This is the way it's going to go. And the so-called experts put that out there. And uh, they, they do it just to get people to look at their, uh, what the hell they uh, write so that they can get the uh, credit and the dollars and cents when more people look at their stupid, uh, what they're posting. But at the end of the day, they don't know any more than like what we know. We could just, it's, it's like the uh, uh, basketball tournament, the March Madness. People just fill in. Uh, uh, names of teams and they they win the whole thing uh, outside of like maybe the first or second pick like there was some guy I believe from Kentucky he's a quarterback uh, named Will Levis you've never heard of him no one's heard of him but uh, they were talking about how he is a part of this class of quarterbacks who's just a stud you know there's this kid from Ohio State CJ Stroud and there's a dude from Alabama named Bryce Young and some guy from Florida, uh, Anthony Richardson Levis. And I forget the fifth, but they're like, oh my God, the first round's going to be unbelievable with all these quarterbacks flying off of the shelves. It's going to be awesome. Oh my God, it's a great quarterback class. And so they're kind of right, except they weren't because uh, Levis, Levis, um, they, what they do is the, uh, the NFL invites all the players, um, and they, uh, are in like the green room awaiting to get drafted. And then, well, as time passes, no one drafts some of these guys. So they have to like walk out of the room and like everyone's looking at them like they're losers because they expected to go, go in the first round and they, and they didn't. Uh, there was several dudes, at least four, uh, who didn't, and they have to hope now for the next the next round, you know. Uh, so that's uh, that's kind it's kind of embarrassing, you know. By the way, Aiden Lynch checking in. And Lutz calls the snow day. He is here. Breaking news: Lutz just called the snow day. No school for me to mow. Uh, why are you enjoying this show, Aiden? You should be, aren't you supposed to be like uh, in school by now? Well, anyway, welcome to you. Hope you're, uh, hope everybody's doing well in your life. What's the plan? I mean, are, are you now going to start uh Working towards uh, getting into sports broadcasting. Oh my goodness! He says he's uh, at the chiropractor watching, so it's okay. All right. Oh, I've never seen that before. Getting your back crack, getting your neck crack. Breaking news! Welcome to you. That was a wild time. That uh, amount of fame that just hit you like that. And the good people of Hamilton, Michigan. All right. 
So anyway, um, the way this uh, draft went down, it was so fucked up because my point was all these guys uh, claim that they know what the fuck they're doing. And then, um, you know, all hell breaks loose because like uh, they picked that Bryce Young guy. Um, Carolina did who they're shaping up to be a pretty good team. I think eventually, uh, then the Houston Texans took CJ Stroud from Ohio state. And then they made a trade with the Arizona. Houston made a trade with Arizona. Arizona gave the third pick to, uh, to Houston. And I don't know what they got in return. I don't follow it enough. I don't give a fuck. But then they drafted some defensive guy, uh, Witherspoon. That's all I know. And he's supposedly great. So they got the se- the first two of the three top picks. And then I'm waiting for my Lions to make their pick at number six. And they traded their pick to Arizona, who just gave up their pick. What? So uh, they traded that. To- hey, knock it off. They traded that to Arizona. And Arizona gave the Lions like two picks. They gave them their number 12 and also their, uh, some, I don't know. It's, it's all fucking nuts to me. Um, the, the point of all this is the Lions have five picks out of the first 55 players drafted. So, uh, all right. And with their first pick, they drafted some guy from Alabama who's like a stud running back. I never, I never like bone up on this shit. I don't want to sound like some sports asshole. Who knows what the fuck is up? There's nothing worse than sports dick who acts like this is like important. It's not. So we get some fuck face from Alabama who I guess is great, except for the fact that uh, he probably, you know, some questionable uh, things in his past because he went to Alabama uh, with his uh, poor coaching there at Alabama. And then they, uh, after that, their next pick, some giant white guy from Iowa, which I think all players from Iowa are like white guys. And uh, he was a a linebacker. I know his first name's Jack. Jack something or other. Classic name. 6'5", like 250, and can uh, runs like the wind, just an absolute beast. Are you, okay, are you sitting or are you peeing, Darla? Okay, she she's so fat that when she uh, sits, uh, sometimes I think she's taking a leak. Why don't you relax, man? Fuck. All right, so that was it. That, that's all, that, that is all you need to know, okay? Um, that's all that matters. Anyone else who suggests... That there's more stories to follow in this. They're crazy. No one gives a shit at this point. It's always so anticlimactic for me. Uh, when the draft happens. But now it's done. Well, no, it's not. There's actually like a more. The, the, the first round finished today. Or yesterday. And now they continue. I think it goes all weekend. My God. Uh, LJ guy, 2004 says nobody cares after the first pick. I know. I know that's so true. Uh, my favorite are the facial expressions of the guys that think they will get picked and don't my guy, Jalen Carter, who killed somebody, uh, right after the national championship game. Well, not, not really. I mean, he was racing down the street in his car uh, and one of his teammates was in the car next to him with another staffer from the team, and they're driving too fast. They crashed the car. They're dead. And then he drives away, and then, oh, yeah, I, I wasn't involved in this. No, I don't want to ruin my draft stock, which is what he should have done. He should have left the scene. But then he made the mistake of telling the truth to the police. First, he lied to the police and said, yeah, I wasn't here. I don't even know these people. And then they said, ah, wait a minute. We think it was you. He said, oh, okay. It was me. And he like admits to it. So what are you doing? No, hang on. Come here. Damn it. Um, 
he his draft he fell to like ninth and the uh, eagles picked him up i wanted the lions to get that guy so bad uh because he's just a well he's he's a killer is what he is he didn't care about his fellow man and that's the guy you want there you want to draft the person with the most brushes with the law like this uh mozzie smith from uh, michigan he uh, played high school football like 15 miles from here in East Kentwood. And uh, that fucker, um, he had a loaded gun on him, and he's not supposed to. It was, it was felony firearms possession. He got uh, popped last year uh, during the college football season from Michigan. And uh, so that's that's excellent news. You know, you want that guy. And uh, he said, well, wait a minute. I was just trying, I was trying to get, uh, I was in the process of getting my uh, uh, pistol license. And they said, no, nah, fuck you. And I'm like, yes. It turns out though, that the prosecutor offered him a plea. You know how they do that plea deal shit just to like move the cases along. That seems to be justice these days. Hold, hold on, hold on a quick second. Hey, no, do not ch- Okay. This dog is getting to the bratty teenager stage where um, she's just fucking with her brothers and being an asshole. And then so I get a hold of her and now she's going to sit here and cry like it's the end of the world. Listen to me. It's time to relax. You've taken like five dumps. You've peed like 10 times. It's Friday. Everybody just wants to chill and have a good time. Quit attacking everything in sight. Can we do that? Okay. got like a bed full of toys there's toys everywhere in that bed and she's like eating socks and blankets and pillows and other dogs so mozzie come on man so mozzie smith gets popped uh pleads down uh and then his draft stock falls he ends up getting drafted in the first round i forget to who who the fuck picked him it doesn't matter but in my opinion, that should have uh, made him like a top five pick, for fuck's sake. Is this going to get to a point with his dog where I'm like, okay, uh, I'm just going to stop podcasting for about five months. Uh, our pal Aiden, Aiden Lynch. Breaking news! He's announcing the Hamilton Hometown 5K tomorrow. Good! Uh, in case you don't know, Aiden Lynch... A uh, high school broadcaster who went viral when uh, the superintendent of the schools called the snow day. Let's just call the snow day. As uh, the game was winding down the big high school basketball game. And then he went viral by uh, that impassioned call that there's no school tomorrow. Woo! No school for me tomorrow. Everybody, everybody fell in love with him. Uh, he joined me on the show. I was doing radio that week, too. He joined me on the radio. All right, somebody's relaxing. That's good news. Um, keep at it, you know. Um, you, you just need to know, though, if you're going to do any type of uh, radio broadcasting, it's a slog. It is, it's like a disaster. And it's even harder now for people to... Um, to do it if if there's any hope i think it could be in play by play because there will always be a need for a play by play announcer or color commentary um uh, because there's games but a uh, talk show host or something like that on the radio is kind of a uh, a dead thing i was just reading an article that um sports talk network sports talk radio is uh in its final stages of life, breathing its last breath. 
so that when you turn on uh, whatever station and you hear like um, a, a network show, not local to your neck of the woods, and they're talking uh, the NFL draft, no one's listening. No one. It's remarkably bad. Uh, the local shows still get some attendance and make some money. Uh, so there's that. I don't mean to, you know, try to sound bleak on this deal, but uh, maybe diversify yourself. Just listen to your old pal, Eric Zane, who's jaded and bitter and uh, wants nothing to do uh, with that industry. No, that's not true. I'm just jaded and bitter. Like, I'll be honest with you. If somebody called me and said, hey, why don't you on the radio? Go, okay. All right, great. I'm so happy. Fucking asshole. Uh, Ryan writes, according to my Facebook memory wall feed, on this day seven years ago, Eric Zane was tearing down doors like Susan Samples, getting an exclusive interview with XO, that's a rough sushi restaurant, ownership about reopening their downtown resident after a bunch of health violations. He couldn't get them on WBBL, so he took it on himself to take a camera over to the, rest- over to the restaurant. Yeah, I, after they opened up, after the health code violations, uh, I brought a bunch of audience members over there, and we had lunch. Uh, Amy with a racist joke about the school where Mozzie Smith played, Kentwood. She said, it's Kent Hood. Racist. Uh, I'm getting some comments about, oh, yeah, Darla's doing will- really well. Five minutes later, hey, no. Now, overall, I'm just talking about like potty training and things like that. She's still feisty. All right. Uh, is Darla having treats yet, Eric? Maybe one of those Kong balls with some peanut butter or something in it. Maybe. Maybe. I appreciate that. Ryan says television isn't any better. But if you have the passion, you can get anywhere. Very kind. So true, I guess. All right. I had another successful phone call, which led to a uh, female on the other end of the line saying something uh, flirty to me. Okay. And I've talked about this before. I have an unbelievable gift. And not only my gift, but it lines up with the bar being so low, with people being very, very rude to people on the phone, that when they encounter me, who is so sweet on the phone, uh, they indicate that they're moist. Uh, When I was booking my... um, I called the uh, marina or the RV park at uh, Liberty Park Marina in Jersey City to book um, a long weekend there. And I described this a couple weeks ago. She was, you know, typical Jersey lady. And uh, I could sense the moment she picked. Yeah, Jersey Harbor, Jer- Liberty Liberty Park Marina. As soon as she picked it up, that she's you, you don't fuck with her. And as soon as I start talking, hang on, okay. Yeah, yeah, no problem. And she just sets the phone, doesn't put it on hold, sets the phone down. I can hear what she's doing. And she's yelling at people in the office. And I know, I know, my God, come settle down. Hold your horses. You know, all that shit. Picks up, yeah, okay, okay, where were we? Uh, Yeah, yeah, uh uh-huh, uh-huh. And as I'm talking, I'm not finishing the sentences. And she's going, "Uh uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, uh uh-huh. And uh, I'm, uh, I want to say, shut the fuck up. I'm like, oh, okay. And then uh, she's like, okay, hang on. I go, hey, no problem. No problem. Now, um, my wife's sitting next to me. We're driving. It's on speakerphone. Uh, As we spoke, she first referred to me as my love. And then um, 
finally, she referred to me as her love muffin. As the call's winding down. Okay, that's going to be, this will be the charge. And then, okay, uh, you got two nights to start. You cannot have a refund a week out. And then uh, day of, when you arrive, Eric, we're going to go ahead and get uh, the rest of that uh, charge to your card. Okay? Yep, that, uh, that sounds great. Looking forward to seeing you. Okay, my love muffin. Love muffin. She actually said love muffin. Diana had to put her hand over her mouth because she was laughing. She just was, it was so funny. And uh, I hung up. I go, you see, if that all happened in person, I could have, I could have had sex with that woman without a doubt. And she agreed. She goes, that's incredible. I go, I'm telling you, that is my new fun thing to do. You just treat these people, um, at the just the bare minimum of polite don't overdo it just like be patient and try to have an inflection and a peppiness when you're speaking to them it's such a uh, oasis of goodness if from their miserable job that they want to give you their vagina i was making an appointment yesterday for a uh, uh colonoscopy endoscopy for the nfk She, uh, she gets in the phone. She goes, okay. Um, and uh, she seemed like an easy mark to begin with because she had a bit of a, a pleasantness in her voice. So I knew this was an easy one. And uh, go through all the, uh, you know, scheduling rituals to get this thing done. And then uh, it ends. We hang up. A short time later, she calls back. Is this Eric? I go, yes, it is. She says, okay, and her name was AJ, believe it or not. This is AJ again. I think I messed up. I had you arriving. Uh, her procedure begins at 945 with an arrival time at 845. I go, yes. She says, that's different. It's already changed. 915 procedure, 815 arrival. Is that going to be okay? I go, absolutely. She goes, okay. All right. Thank you, my dear. Nothing about that. Completely professional, massive uh, hospital organization. And she falls into full flirt mode with a my dear. That's big. You may think, oh, come on. No, it is. It really is. I would never dream of referring to anybody in a professional setting as my dear or love muffin. What? But they can't help it. You put me in front of the meanest fucking rattlesnake woman and I can make her gush. Okay. I've got an upcoming uh, appointment with the blood Nazi who, if you recall, that's the lady at the um, clinic where I get my blood taken for um, kidney donation follow up. Every certain amount of time I have to go get, give a blood, give blood. Um, and then they look at my values and they, they need this for their um, records, I guess, to follow up on the kidney donation. And this motherfucker was, oh, shit. I have seen her. She dropped the hammer on me initially when I first met her uh, years ago. Um, since then, I've learned and I've adopted this whole method that I was telling you about. And uh, now she just is eating out of the palm of my hand. Uh, one of the strangest looking people ever. If you can picture Gary Coleman from 1981's Different Strokes, she looks like that. Okay? Um, or a former, San Fr uh, uh, former Philadelphia 76ers point guard, Mo Cheeks. That's who she resembles. Uh, she just yells at people. She's so fucking mean and aggressive. Not me, though. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. You know? She says jump. I say how high. Next thing you know, uh, her gash is wide. I can't help it. It's great fun for me.
Nikki says, when I talk to patients, I say hun a lot to make them feel at ease and seem friendly. Okay, um, that's nice. However, they think that you want them. They think that you are willing to have random sex. Stevie says, Jesus, Eric, her gash. <laughs> Kenny says, everybody talks like this in the South. No, not if you're rude. All right. That all happened again. Amanda says, I say sweetie sometimes to be nice. Okay. You see, you can't. If you want to keep it professional, you can't. But I know you probably are horny, and that's that's what's happening there. You people let your horny your horny level consume you, and then this hat you drop your professional side. I would never dream. Especially a guy would I would never dream of saying talking to anyone like that. It, um, you know, especially the way today is, you know, you get uh, some chicks uh, take offense to that. That uh, if you use one of those terms, have you ever heard that happening? Especially with a, like a millennial, millennial and younger. If you say anything like uh, "my dear" or "sweetie" or "honey," it's it's they they hate that. And they, they want you to die. They, they try to cancel you, get your job, get you to lose your job. Uh, uh, say that you feel that they feel objectified and they're sexually assaulted. So guys, for sure, don't ever do this. Women can get away with it. Men cannot. Don't ever lose sight of that. You will not, men, you will not refer to any of our, uh, uh, any of the ladies as hun or, or, or toots toots is a real bummer. If you drop a toots on somebody, you're, you're fucked right in the butt. Holy shit. I don't think anybody says toots anymore. That's just uh, an insult. Yeah. Whatever toots. And if you say it like that, Oh, it's all about tone because if I say, yeah, well, yeah, whatever, sweetie, that's insulting. But if I say, okay, sweetie, thank you. It's, it's your, it's your tone. You know, if you say it softly or, or aggressively, that's the difference. Corey says, cool story, toots, go clean something. Yeah. You don't want to do that. Ryan says, or uh, Amanda says, I never know if I should use Mr. So-and-so, Mr. Last Name or First Name anymore. Ryan indicates, in today's day and age, it's best not to address anyone under any circumstances. Nikki says, I got called toots by that social media asshole in Kansas. I guess I don't know the background of that. Yeah, that toots is not going to work in any light. Like if I were talking to, um, even if you said it like that in a polite way, say, okay, thanks toots. Said it like that. You're, you're still, it's, that's a problem. There's no way that you're going to win with that. Ryan says, uh, I stand with EZ. That's, that's BFZ to you. I stand with big fraud Zane on this. If women do this, it sends mixed signals. Slower dudes won't be able to comprehend the situation. Yeah, that's how sexual assaults occur. If you're a lady, and like that, my lady in Jersey City who says, okay, all right, love muffin. I mean, if I were a moron, like let's say I'm Dean, boring Dean, and I'm on the, on, uh, and that's who's receiving the love muffin blast. He's going to try uh, to rape, you know? That's what he's going to do. He's going to sexually assault her. You don't, you don't want that. Uh, Stevie says, I don't want anyone calling me hun, sweetie, or darling. No, 
Absolutely. One million percent correct. Um, what if it's an old lady, though? I mean, man, for sure not. But what if it's a it's a it's an elderly lady and says, "Okay, thank you, sweetie." She says it all whimsical and and nice like that. Doesn't that work? So I don't know. If, I I'm guessing you wouldn't that you if if old lady did that or if like my dad who's 89 said, "Okay, hon," you wouldn't go, "Hey, I am not hon." You know. Uh, Corey says there's a flood of TikToks right now that says if a woman makes more than two to three seconds of eye contact with you, she's DTF. Wow. I would never know because I don't look at anybody. When I'm at the gym, like I was yesterday, um, and I, I think it's safe to assume that if anyone, like let's say a lady looks at me for any amount of time, I'm going to assume that in their brain, uh, if they look at me for two to three seconds, they're not looking at me in that regard. It's more like, wow, that's really great. That's such an elderly man can still try to uh, get some type of exercise. That's what I'm going to assume is being thought of. Okay? It's a young person's game at the gym. I just sit back and watch all the interactions. Besides, there's videos going all around um, of uh, if, if someone looks at a girl in the gym for that amount of time, where nowadays the women will bust out their phone and um, approach you and say, hey, uh, excuse me, do you want to take a picture or say something like that? And, oh, God, I don't want to be on the receiving end of that one. So I just my, I look down at the ground. I can have the, uh, the sweetest ass. So I can be surrounded by sweet asses, and I won't even notice because I am looking directly to the floor every time. No way. Fuck that. Um, your old pal EZ has to go tinkle. Don't go anywhere. We've got a lot of great stuff coming up, including Rick from TC Paintball. Oh, oh, oh. I love getting Rick on. We'll be talking to him in a moment. Boy, 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 boy. Um, boy, I still got the Facebook crowd here that I have to kick out. All right. With that being said, uh, Facebook crowd still here, Twitter crowd still here. I'm about to send you on your way, but you need to know this. Today on the Ben and Eric Patreon podcast, which starts at 7 p.m. Eastern time, we're going to dip our toe into the water for the Who Are These Free Beers segment. Segment slash show. Um, I am getting this show off of the ground on Patreon. Where we will be reviewing clips from free beer and hot wing shows only. Similar to who are these Zanes. Except this will be all current material of theirs. I'm going to review it. And uh, we're going to discuss it. (laughs) Corey writes, this might be a little too far, poking the extremely insecure bear. Um, We're already getting thoughts about 
what some of the content will be. Uh, today, I'm not doing like, I'm just, I just have one clip that I wanted to touch on. But when we do the show, when we actually do, who are these free beers? It will be uh, much more involved with the number of clips each time we do it. And I'm not sure about the frequency. For me, it's always weird because every time I commit to something, then I'm like, oh, fuck, I can't get it done. So I don't want to overcommit, under deliver. So I, I, I don't know. I know it won't be weekly. It may be monthly. It might be quarterly. I don't know. I, I got to wait and see. You know how it is with me. Fuck, I just got done telling you how I can't do a compound show because I'm fucking lazy. Anyway, today on the show, we are going to feature something spectacular that happened uh, on our friends, the Free Beer and Hot Wings show. And we're going to listen to it and break it down. Corey says, or Chris says, and you don't want to overdo it anyway. Tyler says, just say it'll be yearly, then anything more will be over delivering. Aram says, who are these hot wings? We'll just be listening to a guy staring and talking about spoons. Stevie says, this is going to be another easy broken promise like puppy cam. She has zero faith in your old pal, easy. Kyla says, everyone keep telling what Eric, what Eric to do and he'll probably do it. I think that makes sense. <laughs> By the way, um, Kelly, who you know how I feel about Kelly. Uh, Kelly on that show is a fucking superstar and no one appreciates her. Oh my God. It is so mean. You would not believe what these people are saying about her. And I, 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 you know, from an outside perspective, outside looking in, I don't know her. Ne I'd never met her. Um, but the level of hatred is, I can't believe it. Now, maybe I'm missing it, but the level of vitriol is astounding. This person said, I just uh, created a Reddit account to comment. I've been a subscriber to their content as a VIP for years. I signed up when they were very when it was very first introduced since 2007. I've listened to the podcast every day at work and would have uh, and save them up for long road trips and such. Huge fan ever since they started on the radio in Nashville, Tennessee, where I live. I was up for renewal this month and I let it go. I just couldn't take it anymore. I've been through a lot with these guys. The podcast got me through so many hard times and have been a constant. Uh, it's been a constant through uh, lots of uh, fun times. I loved Zane, but his brand of humor wears on me. The kind of the kind of guy who doesn't know when to quit. Example, interrupting everyone with drops is funny. Like the first three to four times, he'd keep going and going. And that annoyed me after a while. I didn't hate Justin. I just th uh, saw through all of his BS, his made up stories, but I was, in I was entertained by them. So it didn't bother me that he was trying too hard. I loved Kelly at first because she was a Southern woman and that seemed to be a kind, kind of an opposite and added a certain something to the show. Here's the point. This person writes, uh, Kelly is absolutely dragging the show down. Even if Joe were still part of the cast, Kelly would be an albatross still. As someone said, she's a one trick pony. Can you believe this? Okay, whatever. They all are to some degree. Her arrogance is what has turned me off. She's so confidently wrong all the time. You want that. You have to have that. 
This lady, uh, she writes uh, too long, didn't read, and then sums it up with, I understand the show has ha- has and will continue to evolve because the people on the show have and will continue to evolve. After nearly two decades, though, I have to say goodbye. And the absolute final straw for me among many straws over the years was Kelly. Oh, fuck. I don't know how you could possibly say that. I mean, seriously. <laughs> That's always been Sam. Yes. Yeah. So I looked it up. I was like, Pretty beer. I remember what, though? <laughs> Jesus. I haven't seen it. <laughs> it was a little obnoxious. That's always been Sam. How do you not find that charming? Cars. Christmas. Incredible. New York. Come to Oregon. Come here. Temperature. Algorithms. Incredible. Four. Crust. Cripple. Well, uh, when we start to unpack who are these free beers? We will most certainly be focusing on every aspect of the show as best that we can. All right. Um, where am I here? What the fuck am I doing? If you're enjoying the show on Facebook, uh, Twitter, and YouTube, I'm about to send you on your way. Enjoy the day. Sign up on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Eric Zane live. If you want the full show it's that simple and download the show the audio podcast wherever you download shows got a patreon just talked about that p-a-t-r-e-o-n patreon.com slash eric zane thank you facebook and twitch brought to you by irvine's auto repair grand rapids hybrid and ev twitter brought to you by blue frost it email the show eric at eric zane show.com on the shoreliners striping inbox Marley Rivera is the baseball reporter who the shit hit the fan this week. As I understand it, Marley Rivera was standing next to another Latina reporter. Uh, I don't know how you pronounce it. It's I V O N with a little thing above the O. I think that might be e- Yvonne. Gaete, G-A-E-T-A. Uh, both ladies, uh, Yvonne Gaete is uh, trying to interview Aaron Judge, the star for the Yanks. And he's like signing people's autographs and stuff. And she's kind of like waiting her turn. Well, I guess this Marley Rivera was trying to get her to get the fuck out of there because... Of uh, she didn't. She thought it was rude that Ivan Gaete was trying to get an interview while he's doing something. She, so she's speaking to her in Spanish, saying, "Hey, come on, get the fuck out of here!" And uh, it, it was all weird. And then the uh, Ivan Gaete uh, went ahead and then started talking to Aaron Judge. And I guess Marley Rivera um, made it her business and was uh, was upset at that. Uh, so this is how that unfolded. There's a key thing that we have to pay attention to. It's something that, uh, Marley Rivera says to, uh, lady Yvonne Gaete, both ladies. And, uh, that cost her her job. Audio check, video check. Here we go. Uh, stadium music. Uh, the lady speaking, that's uh, Marley Rivera. She's the one who's about to get fired. Okay, so it seems above board. They're having a conversation. Oh, 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 oh no! Look at the, look at Yvonne Gaete. She's like, what? Because she approached Judge while he was signing. Uh, the woman already said, "Yeah, just let him sign the autographs, and then he'll talk to you," or something like that. Okay. 
que tengo algo se quedó con Aro. No te molesta. Oh, what a fucking fun. Oh. Okay, look at that face on Yvonne Gaete there. That is a face of a woman who's about to fuck you up bad. <laughs> oh, you don't ever want to see squinty eyes leaned in, big giant mouth like that, getting ready to kick your ass. You don't ever want that. Excuse me, did you record that, right? I wasn't talking about you. Thank you very much. Okay, this this rolled downhill really fast because this lady, this Yvonne Gaete, she's married to some, uh, I think the communications director for Major League Baseball. And uh, sh- that that went over to the to this uh uh Marley of uh, uh Marley Rivera she works for ESPN and she was fired for that shit quickly um yes ESPN has fired national baseball reporter Marley Rivera after she used vulgar language during a confrontation with another female sports journalist VA company issued release to the uh, New York Post, ESPN said, she no longer works here. (laughs) Oh, she said, I fully accept responsibility. Tu madre es una puta. Uh, For what I said, which I should not have, Rivera told the Post. And then she adds, there were extenuating circumstances. Well, that's an excuse. And then she says, but that in no way is an excuse. Well, they, yes, it is. You just did it and then said it wasn't. I am a professional with a sterling reputation across baseball. Some don't agree with that. I'll tell you why. And I do believe that I am being singled out by a group of individuals with whom I have a long history of professional disagreements. Previous allegations of aggressive interactions with fellow reporters have emerged against Marley Rivera. People kept receipts. They're like, oh, yeah. Um, Let's see. What are they? What are the previous allegations? By the way, that all happened in front of kids. Jesus. Uh, What the fuck was it? I hate when I do this. Okay, in a separate incident, okay, uh, the Washington Post uncovered previous fractious, I don't know what that word is, exchanges Rivera is accused of having with other journalists. Two people told the outlet that Rivera upset that a reporter was trying to take a photo of Hispanic players that she was also photographing, called the the reporter a white bitch. Oh, fuck me. In a separate incident, Rivera alleged, allegedly called another reporter who is Latino a fake Hispanic. Oh, no. And you know what? I think what part of this boils down to. Tyler says, I was expecting forbidden Spanish, but she surprised me and spat out some forbidden English. Um, Rivera, who it looks like she has some type of bandaid on her face is in no way hot enough to behave this poorly. And, uh, this chick is, uh, victory Yvonne Gaete. That pissed off chick face is hot. Oh my God. <laughs> What a shit show. I don't know about you, but I love it when people lose their shit and fuck up and get in trouble for it. Because I've done it. You know, it's a fucking train wreck. Oh, my God. Spectacular. All right. Uh, Before I bring in Rick. uh, Reminder about the Mario Flores 
Lakeshore team of Van Dyke Mortgage with offices all across the United States after a massive expansion. Reach out at 231-332-6505 when you are ready to learn more about a possible mortgage or a refi uh, for you. Now, the only place you cannot take advantage of this are the places where Mario is not licensed. Alaska, Hawaii, Maine, and South Carolina. 231-332-6505 for the Mario Flores Lakeshore team of Van Dyke Mortgage. Maybe it's your first mortgage. Maybe it's your 10th. Maybe it's a refi. If it's your first mortgage, that's that's anxiety. You know, you don't know what the fuck is going on. You got to have an expert like Mario to talk you through all of it. Also, um, if the interest rate you get now, or I should say the interest rate you get now likely will be much lower in the months and years to follow. So you're going to want to stay on top of this. Mario will help you every step of the way in your refi at a lower interest rate, which over the amount of time, the term on the loan is going to save you a ton of money. 231-332-6505. Thank you as always to Johnson Carpet One Floor and Home Discount Outlet. Chicago Drive in Granville, Michigan, right behind the Little Caesars. That's where you go when you want the lowest price for any type of flooring under the sun. Show up with a vehicle that can get it out of there because... You're going to go in, you're going to say hi, you're going to give them the dimensions of the room, you're going to pick out what you want, and you take it home right there. No ordering and waiting, nothing, nothing like that. They buy it all in bulk ahead of time and then just sell it for an incredibly low price because they get it for such a low price because they buy so much. And then mention my name, and you can take an additional 10% off. Johnson Carpet One discount outlet in Granville, Michigan, worth the drive. And then there's Blue Frost IT. All right. So you've got a small or medium-sized business and your tech sucks. You've got old, antiquated gear. You need an upgrade. Blue Frost IT can help. Sit down for a 30-minute complimentary consultation from Blue Frost IT, and they will help you every step of the way in getting your gear set up. All right. Uh, That's all it takes. After that's all figured out, you buy it. They help you set it up. Blue Frost IT Find them at bluefrostit.com or call 616-200-8550. That's 616-200-8550 for Blue Frost IT, longtime sponsor of the Eric Zane Show podcast. Okay. Uh, Let's bring in Rick from TC Paintball. Ah, man. Good morning, Eric Zane. Oh, listen to you all bright and chipper. Uh, The birds are singing. Yeah, they are. They are. Do you find yourself, as you're getting older, appreciating things like the birds? Well, first of all, yes. But why is it every time we have a conversation, we're talking about how old we're getting? I know. That seems to be a regular thing. Isn't that fucking stupid? I mean, it is a topic, not just with you, but I mean, every day I'm like, man, man, yeah, my I, mind is young and my body is not. I know that. I think that's, that's good though. You know, I mean, like, uh, I, I still feel like I'm 20, uh, but mentally, but then get out of bed in the morning and set, set your feet on the ground and start walking around and you realize, you know what? I'm not 20. Nope. Nope. None of that. None of that. Um, all right. So I, I wanted to run this, but first of all, did you get my text? I did get your tell, yeah, about uh, um, Jacob Bennett. Yeah, is that is that even something you'd be interested in, that conversation? It's, it's an, I, I'm definitely interested in having a conversation about it. It doesn't seem like he has enough land there to do very much with, but I'm interested in seeing the spot and, uh, and just talk about what he had in mind. Yeah, the potential for TC Paintball South is, uh, is, 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 sounds exciting to me. It's always something I'm considering, but I really want 20 to 50 acres in that neighborhood. 20 to 50? Holy fuck! Hell, hell yeah, yeah. How many acres do you have right now? Just over seven. 
And that's your property. It's my property, yes. That includes the building and everything. So the whole lot is like 7.2 acres or something like that. It's a fucking gold mine. Oh, my God. How long that's have you? The retire, that's the retirement plan. Yeah. How long have you owned that? Uh, 2017 is when we bought this building. So almost six years. Oh, my God. Well, now, when you do that, because, you know, that's that's a lot of money to buy that much property plus the building. Do you have to get, like, a business loan, or is it just, like, a mortgage? It's, it's like a commercial a commercial loan. I, I bought the – I initially bought the building on land contract, so it was just a deal between me and the, the owners of the building. And then, basically, I had a five-year land contract where I had to figure out financing. So, at about – at just about four years, I got approved for my financing, and then uh, you know we, it transferred over to more like a traditional mortgage, but in a commercial sense. So you just get every month you got to pay a certain amount. Yep, exactly. Oh, fuck. Have you ever had like a bad month, and you're like you start to panic that the end is near? Well, I have anxiety and paranoia, and. The, you know, this business is older than, you know, my marriage, my relationships, any relationship I've ever been in. So it's like I'm married to this business. So it's it's a it's a roller coaster for sure. You have your good days where you kill it. You have your other days where you're not killing it and you still have bills to pay. It's up and down for sure. But, oh, yeah, yeah I, I always try to have enough money, you know, uh, enough of a cushion where if I have a bad month, you know, I'm not out of business. <laughs> you know, that would be a bummer with just one bad month. Isn't that fucked up? Yeah, that's that's frightening, and uh, but I, I'm I'm in the same boat, you know, and uh, it it depends. Like I always find myself losing, going into an anxiety attack at the end of a day, just before bedtime, when like I guess more chance to be tired, and then I'm like, it starts to get in my own head then, and then I have, I crash, I wake up, and then I'm not bothered by it anymore. I mean, it does hit me then, you know, if I have one of those nights where I can't sleep very well, and then if you just kind of focus on the shit that could go wrong or that is going wrong, um, I always try to focus on the projects that I'm working on. Like, okay, I have this, you know, large project, and I try to break it down into small little projects within that project. People ask me all the time, Eric Zane, how do you do it? You have to balance so many things. You have to have your hand in just about everything in order to make a living. How are you doing it? Well, frankly, when I started... I have no idea. I think I kind of just muscled my way through it. But there is one secret that I've never really talked about until now. It's a book. It's called Elevate. Build a business where everybody wins. The author is a dude named Tommy Mello, which sounds like a guy who was a roadie for the Grateful Dead. But no, this guy's a genius. And you got to get this book. He's built a $200 million business with over 700 employees. And in this book, I discovered some skills and things that I can do to help me in what I do. It applies to just about any line of work. Kind of like if you're sick and tired of working for the man, you can become the man or woman, woman, you know, gender stuff or else everybody's going to get mad. What I'm suggesting is you check out the book. It's a quick read and what you will gain when you read it will blow your mind tommy Mello. the book is elevate build a business where everybody wins trust me on this get a copy of elevate at elevate and win.com slash zane all right you might have to back up and get that one again but here i'll, I'll tell you again elevate and win.com slash zane you're gonna love it when you go to elevate and win.com slash zane you will get five exclusive bonuses including a winning ads and application page checklist the interview bundle the seven steps of delegation and more if you're in a rush elevate is also available on amazon though you will only receive the free bonuses when you go to elevate and win.com slash zane read it and when you finish the book get ready to have your life changed Guys, got hair loss? I know what you're thinking. Should I shave my head, comb it over, wear a hat? Just stop. This is in 1970. Keep your hair and your confidence because Bosley, America's number one hair restoration experts, can give you your real hair back permanently. 
check them out today because they're giving away an absolutely free information kit and a free gift card for anyone who goes to bosley.com. Dude, you don't have to look like your dad because this isn't your dad's hair loss treatment. People all over the country trust Bosley because they're ahead of the curve. They use the latest technology to give you your real hair back. And the best part? Bosley's permanent solution is protected by the Bosley Guarantee. Let Bosley show you for free how awesome your hair could look with an absolutely free information kit and a gift card for $250 off. Go to bosley.com. That's B-O-S-L-E-Y.com. Bosley.com. So, okay, get good steps one and two done, and then focus on step three. But I mean, at night, when you have, you know, a lot of things you got to worry about, that's really when it hits you, when the kind of the world slows down a little bit. So I'm a big believer in edibles at night. Oh! Yeah, <laughs> sleep. Yes. Let, let you sleep through the night. You wake up the next day as a fresh day, and you get to attack it. Oh, my God. Uh, all right, interesting. Uh, uh, Kuiper's who you're going to see Sunday. He mentioned, yes. he mentioned ax throwing. It's like, I it's like, hold on Kuiper's. I pretty, I pretty much, I know for a fact he's working on the ax throwing. Is that so true? The next question is, is it ready? Yeah. yeah it, no, I, I know yeah. it's not ready. Yeah, it's not, re- it's not it ready. Is, I know that. It's not ready. It's not ready. Don't feel and bad this about is part of my This is part of my anxiety creeping in. So I've had to buy, I've had to spend a lot of money recently. And to get the axe throwing where I need it, uh, to buy the projectors, which, which create the target for the axe throwing, I got to spend several thousand dollars and I have it ready to go. I just haven't pulled the trigger on spending the money. Yeah. It's 100% something I'm doing, but I'm trying to pay down a little of the shit that I've been buying over the last couple months. So my credit card statement doesn't look terrible. Oh, and I want to hang myself. Fucking so A. So I'm, I'm dragging my feet and I'm also busy with other projects so i'm just like you know what i'm gonna focus on these projects we're gonna get back to axe throwing soon but i just haven't i haven't carved out time or money for it right now so with that being said how yep. about we get a bunch of zane listeners to show up on sunday to help me you know supplement the yep. pain which by the way um we it is going to be all latinos oh nice yes it's going to be um the white guy slaughter I think um, we can reenact a famous uh, uh, Spanish American war or Mexican American war or something like Remember that. Remember the Alamo. Yes. And uh, because I think we have 16 brown skin people uh, and then one, okay, me, uh, Kevin Kuypers, Matt Kuypers, Terry and Beth, and another dude. We've, uh, we'll probably have. Uh, north of 22, north of 20, somewhere in there. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah that's it, it great. It's another, it's it's remarkable the amount of people that, it, you know, we'll, we'll add a, a, a small number here and there, but if they were ever to all come together on one of these events, it would be just huge, but it never well, works yeah. out that way. Well, you know, and we always, we're always like, man, we can make it huge. You know, I... I don't care about making it huge. I just want it to be fun. Yes. You know what I mean? Oh, if yeah. It doesn't need to be huge. I mean, I'm comfortable with, we, I think our lowest one we've ever done is like 13, 14, 15 people right in that neighborhood. And the most we've done is like 33 or 34. So you're right. If we got them all here, all the players that have played, get them all here at one time, we probably have 50, but, and, and that'd be great. But I mean, I'm not holding out for the 50 payday. I, right. I'm, what I, what I like is, is just a good group of people that have a good time doing it, that go away thinking, man, that was a good time. You know, I had a little bit of fun. I got to shoot somebody. I got shot a few times. I got a little exercise, got my heart rate up and we had a good time. We'll do it again. That's all I really care about. Have you ever, um, with, you know, um, it seems like every time we turn around, there's a horrible mass shooting. Has anybody ever tried to take that out on you because of paintball? You know, how sometimes video games get blamed. Yeah. I mean, you, you would think so, but honestly, I really haven't. I haven't, I haven't felt any of that trickle down to me really. And, you know, we do our Wednesday night kids leagues. I do both a, a low impact little league for eight to 12 year old kids and a teen league for up to, up to 18 year old kids. Both those leagues are really busy. We average right around 15 kids per league per week. So right around 30 kids every Wednesday. And then I, I, I uh, take videos almost every week and I post the video the yep. next week to promote it on Facebook. And, you know, you got these kids running around 
around. You know, they're playing a sport, but they're also shooting paintball guns at each other. So I keep thinking in the back yeah. of my head, you know, sometime, someday, some someone is going to speak up and say, you, yeah. you shouldn't be doing this. And I, I don't agree with that opinion, but no. I also understand that that opinion is out there. Right, right. So I'm always waiting for it to happen. Well, I can, I can further that. If you really want it to happen, shoot a video of you doing the safety speech with all the kids in their gear and saying, look, and none of this matters unless you take this knowledge to the classroom. Oh, my God. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> I, you know, I don't mind saying shit. They get people to take notes sometimes or to, or to turn ahead, but there's no way I'm saying something like I that. I used to that say that. Taboo. I used to say that to Jim when he was playing Call of Duty. I go, Jim, this is silly. Oh. Let's let's do it in real life. And he just go, Dad, shut up. You're stupid. I go, I know. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, d- uh, disavow, Rick. Disavow. That made me uncomfortable right there. Disavow. This is all oh. a bad, bad thing. Uh, all right. Oh, now, I want to... Don't call you a fucking cunt. No, no, no. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> what I want to talk about. Marley Rivera. <laughs> oh, my God. Did you actually see the video when she said it? I read, when you sent me the link this morning, I read the article, and I didn't see the video. I didn't realize there was a video there until oh, you played it. The video, but I watched yeah. it then. But then the more you talk about her calling other people names, I just feel like, well, number one, you know, that was kind of like that conduct unbecoming. You know, I don't bl- I don't blame anybody for firing her because, you know, she kind of, sounds like a loudmouth. And then when you start <laughs> looking into it, she has called other people names, and she's always talking about this person or that person i mean i think uh where there's smoke there's fire there oh yeah she's a total asshole yeah that's mm-hmm. that's uh that's that's fantastic i i was um and i like hot chick's reaction she was so she, there's kids everywhere and she, she drops a f and c on the world oh, yeah and then that, that chick she turned around and like you said her eyes got squinty and she started talking with her hand oh yeah and i'm like uh-oh this could get ugly you know world star and that that type that actual look with that lean and that point that crosses all ethnic boundaries. Have you ever? Because if you've ever made your better half mad, have you? You've seen that face, Rick. One hundred percent. We all have. And you don't. There is no defense. There is no defense. You you can't like yell back at her because you know at that point she's so laser focused on you being a fuckhead that you're dead. Yeah, all you can do is just roll on your back like a dog and put your feet in the air and say, "Don't kill me." Well, your 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 reaction to that is based on your age. Because when we're young in our twenties and we think we're bulletproof, you know, we're going to yell back and we're going to try to prove her wrong. But as you get older, you realize you got to pick your battles, and you're not going to win this one. You're just going to extend the battle for a while. Yeah. And then at this point in my life, I don't want to extend battles. I want to end the battle and move on to the next thing. There's something spectacular about the the guy who's the age of you and I that's seen a lot and we have that mindset. It's all about that's how marriages get better when the guy when some of the P and V leaves the dude so that he's not such a, a dickhead, you know? Oh yeah. But I mean it, it goes further than that. It's not just learning how to deal with your significant other and they got to deal with us us as well so don't get me wrong we're not we're not uh, perfect by any stretch but it's just learning as you go in general you know i've got an 11 year old and a seven year old and even though i've made shitloads of uh, mistakes in my life i've learned from a lot of the mistakes not all of them but i've learned from a lot of them and i've tried to correct behavior to move forward and and try to make my life better or situations better i can't tell that to my kids they just don't listen you know i coach kids both in paintball and in football and often I have, you know, other coaches say, hey, say this to my kid because he won't listen to me, but you're yeah. not his parents to listen to you. Oh, yeah. And vice versa, I have to tell the other coaches to say things to my kid because they just don't listen. They don't listen until they experience it for themselves. And that's really unfortunate. Yeah, I don't know. I've never I've never gotten that in, especially uh, with my son. He, if I say it, it's not going to happen. It, nope. Just, know better, I, I don't I even I'm bother. When I did too, so I get it. I understand you know, I wasn't any better than that, but it's like, man, I really wish I could get you to understand. I go, wish I could get you to listen to me because I do have this experience and I right. might know what I'm talking about here. Yeah. Um, I, I actually have gotten to the point where I just say the opposite. Um, <laughs> like That's a bull move, Cotton. So if my son says, says uh, yeah, I, I, I'm struggling at work. I wish I made more money. I then say, you should quit. You should just quit and just not work and just collect unemployment and or i'll say something stupid like that 
And then he gets the idea that I'm just tell he should do the uh, what I'm doing with I'm fucking with him. You know. Yeah, no, I I think that's a that's good because then he really thinks about what you're saying and what he really should do instead of just being, you know, rebellious on whatever it is you're saying. Yes. Yeah. After he had his second kid uh under 20, I said, "Well, get after it. We need a do- we need a granddaughter. Have more." What are you, what are you waiting for? Don't stop. All right. Um, how would you react if your kid said, hey, dad, uh, I'm getting ready to uh, uh, enter my senior year and I'm going to be a father. How would you, uh, what, what would you do? <laughs> I, don't, I don't have any idea. My kid's 11. He's got a phone and he's got a girlfriend. And oh, I didn't oh. have a girlfriend quite yet when I was his age. I think I was a year or two later. But I mean, they've been, you know, boyfriend and girlfriend this whole school year. And I'm like, man, these things don't usually last this long. And obviously they don't hang out. They only see each other at school. So there's no, there's no weird things that are going to happen yet. But as he gets older and he starts, you know, hanging out without his parents so much, that's definitely a concern. Oh, yeah. And I don't know about that bridge, but we are really honest with our kids about, you know, things that happen and why they happen. So he has an understanding of how it works, but how careful he's going to be. I, I mean, it's, it's, it's anybody's guess at this point. Do you police the phone? Okay. So I believe the phone should be policed. Now, me personally, I have a hard time going through my kid's phone. Um, I think it should be monitored because if you don't monitor it, I think that's how you get school shooters. You should monitor it, and my wife kind of monitors that and pays attention. But I also think she pays a little bit too close of attention and has an, an opinion on their relationship. I, I don't know. I, I think it should be monitored. I just can't bring myself to do it. I know it's being monitored. So if my wife wasn't doing it, I'd probably be a little bit more um, inclined to do it myself. Yeah. Um, but I, I can't bring myself to do it. I feel like I'm, in, I'm invading his privacy. Um, I just don't want to know that they're looking at hardcore amputee porno. That's, I'm, <laughs> that's the only thing I'm interested in not have happening is learning I've never that. Have you seen amputee porno? <laughs> I think I might search that up. Um, okay. I sent you a link to a story that I'm going to pull up right here for the audience to see of this couple who. Oh, my goodness. Megan and Gunnar Farr of Zavala, Texas. Uh, they are in trouble because they had two two kids, five and nine. And they, they gave them ta- homemade prison tattoos. And to do it, they tied the kids down, Rick. And then when the uh, um, authorities got involved, they tried, once CPS got involved, these two uh, cut, scraped, and scrubbed the kids' skin with lemon juice to make the tattoos go. And they tried to cut out the tattoos. Well, the best piece of information in that entire article is that those two that did it are not their parents. One, like the mom is the parent, but the 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 male is is just a boyfriend or whatever. Yeah. So these kids have an opportunity to get the hell out of that living environment and into the living environment with the with the dad and the stepmom. Um, I don't care who they are, the dad and the stepmom. They got to be better than these two idiots. I mean, that has got to be one of the lowest levels of human life form right there. Um, number one, tattooing them in the first place, and then trying to scrape the skin to get it off. Oh. I mean, my God, take the kids away and never let them what see the, the kids again. Fuck. I mean, seriously. If we just decided to to eliminate these two, there there'd be a freaking party. Nobody would care. I mean, seriously, what? If they end up going if they end up going to prison, they're going to be in deep trouble. I mean, once they get there yeah. and the prison prison population finds out about this, oh my god, are they dead? They are one narrow step ahead, further up on the evolutionary scale than a pedophile. A pedophile is, is worse than them, but they're not much better. Yeah, you know, I mean, uh, absolutely, it's 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 abuse of a child, and then there's always the chance that you know the child enjoyed it with the for the, with the pedophile. Jeez. <laughs> Oh, man. Disavow. Disavow. <laughs> you lost me on that one. Disavow. That was a joke. <laughs> Did you watch the NFL draft or see about your Detroit Lions? 
Oh yeah, I followed it a little bit. Um, I was kind of surprised with the running back pick, but I have faith in Brad Holmes. And these days in the NFL, you need several running backs to get through a 17 game season. Um, Brad Holmes uh, drafts based on talent level and not necessarily on need. I like to move down to the 12 spot um, and getting more picks. What would you say, five picks in the top 55? I mean, that is awesome. And whatever we say, hear, and think about whatever happens in the draft doesn't really matter until the season starts and we see how yeah, it pans out. Yeah, That's it all I, you're absolutely right. This uh, it it uh, it's just something to talk about because honestly, they've been talking about this since the end of the Super Bowl, like I indicated, and it's I'm so glad that that's over. You know. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Um. Okay. Well, that is all that I have for you. I will see you on Sunday, 4 p.m. start. I'll be there with the pizza early, and uh, off we go. Sounds good. I look forward to seeing you. Okay, buddy. Have a good uh, rest of your Friday. See you, See you, man. There you go. Uh, Rick from TC Paintball uh, joining us on the live line. On the live. Hello. Uh, pa- power stereo of him with a dude. Uh, high up here in the playpen. And uh, joining me on the live line today, the one and only Flavio. Flavio, check it. Oh, thank you, the dude. Uh, I'm sorry. Come again. You said you like a yak butter? You better parquet. <laughs> uh, pa- power stereo fan with a dude. All right. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. So that is so fucked up. Uh, the tattoo mom and dad. Oh, they were arrested Monday. The fact that they tied down the kids before cutting their skin in a bid to remove the ink. Uh, It was, as Rick indicated, mother and stepfather. I thought it was mom and dad at first. Uh, Restrained the kids with rope, covered their mouths with tape, and blindfolded them with a rag as they pressed the tattoo needle into their skin. Holy shit. They uh, tattooed the the five-year-old's foot and the nine-year-old's penis was tattooed. That's not true. The nine-year-old's shoulder. CPS got involved. I don't know how they got involved. There was visible injuries on the child at the specific location of the tattoo. It appeared the flesh was removed from the body at the tattoo location. I, the fact that, like, no one will ever know if we just cut the tattoo off. We're good to go. Uh, the kid's biological father and their stepmother spotted the ink and questioned the mother about it. When asked about the tattoos, Megan laughed and drove off. Kid's dad called the cops. They began their investigation. Uh, CPS removed the nine and five year old as well as their two younger siblings and took the two kids to the hospital for treatment. Police interviewed the children about the alleged abuse and recovered a tattoo kit during the course of their week-long investigation. Someone came forward and turned in a tattoo kit. She claimed was loaned to Gunner to perform tattoos. She didn't know if it was going to be performed on a child. My God, what the fuck? How do you, how do you do that? I, you know, I would be more understanding of a pedophile than I would this. This actually seems worse. At least with a pedophile, it's driven by lust, which makes you do crazy shit. This is not driven by lust. It's just a sinister action. Both sinister, but it's weird. You get what I'm saying, I hope? Do you maybe? Like if you had to choose, if you were a child, would you rather... um? Have sex with a dude or get a tattoo put on or removed. You can only choose one. Which one is it going to be? You have to choose one or the other. There's only one person to call and put this in front of that they have to make a decision on this. (laughs) 
dude, what are you doing? <laughs> what? Hey, how are you? <laughs> you gotta rewind, man. Take that, take that shit out. Cut that part out. <laughs> okay, if you have to choose between getting molested, no, and getting a tattoo put on and taken off, no, oh. you yeah. must, you must choose one. What's it gonna be? I'm choosing molestation. But, no, no, no. You're, you're asking me. I'm 46. Like that's not the same. My brain is like okay. hurting. Let's go back in time. Said. Let's go back in time to six-year-old Kenny, and <laughs> and, uh, and your mom. It's a different. Uh, it's a different life. You're no, I, man. Nobody can imagine such a thing. But why would you want anyone to? What are you doing? <laughs> I need you to decide. I need to find out which is worse. Because my point is, I think that getting a tattoo. Your mom put a tattoo on you. I'd, okay, let's say your mom comes into your room. You're uh, playing Frogger. You're six. And she says, Kenny, uh, you can either have me put a tattoo on you and then I will scrape it off of your skin or I can sit on your face. What's it going to be? This is so bizarre and fucked up, man. I can only say that I agree with Rick with what he said. Like, You must choose. No. <laughs> I would let my mom sit on my face. <laughs> You're so fucked up sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. My, my head, like, physically hurts. <laughs> <laughs> God. I, uh, I think that there's a lot. I mean, there's more visible damage. If you have them... Uh, scrape off a tattoo. Every time you see that, you're gonna you're gonna have a terrible time. Eventually, the memory will fade. As uh, uh, the, as Metallica says, the the em- the memory remains. It won't because it'll get fuzzy from your mom sitting on your face. No, that is uh, both both traumatic in their own rights in their own ways, and will have uh, crazy lasting impacts. On, on are you uh, are you telling me that you are not going to participate in this poll? No, fuck no. That's not, God. I will say for the record that I would have rather had my mom sit on my face than get a tattoo put on me and removed. I would rather not have this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I see. I need to take my headache pill now. Okay, there you go. Take your take your headache powder. Isn't that what you hillbillies do? You you, you take uh, fucking headache powder. A lot of people seem to like BC powder, but yeah. I just take the Excedrin generic Excedrin stuff. Yeah, BC headache powder. Yeah, uh, fucking Richard Petty. He uh, he promotes that. Take your headache powder. <laughs> I didn't know that. I didn't know that was till I got to the south. Oh really? Yeah. You, you, you can't buy BC powder in Michigan? No, they, uh, I just never heard of it for some reason, even talked about. It. I got to the Tennessee and Richard Petty's all over. Hey, you all, you got a headache? Take some BC headache powder. <laughs> all right. Uh-oh. Okay, get out of here. All right. Yeah. <laughs> he'd take, he'd, he'd have his mom sit on his face. Stevie says, headache powder, never heard of it. See, I'm telling you, it's a hillbilly thing. He, hey, what matter? I got a headache. You look all laid up with it. That's what uh, um, my mom or my uh, uh, mother-in-law and my step. Wait a minute. Hold on. mother What the fuck just happened? Mother-in-law and father-in-law used to say, you got chef a headache? Yeah. Oh, um, you look all ate up with it. What? Yeah, you look ate up with it. I'm ate up with it. You got to get yourself some headache powder. Goodies headache powder. Yeah, there's goodies and BC. Like BC pizza and headache powder. Some headache powder today. Tell them Richard Petty sent you. All right, Dan. You want your mayors in a poke? Push your buggy up. Push, push your buggy up. Excuse me? You want me to put them maters in poke? I'm just staring at her. It's at the Food City in uh, 
Lenora City, Tennessee. You won't push up. You won't push a buggy up. Hmm. I beg your pardon? You buggy up. What is a buggy up? No, you buggy. You go move it up, sir. Oh, my cart. Push it up. You won't put maters in a poke. Uh, I got tomatoes. I got maters. I, I can figure that one out. Uh, you, I, if, I can put the maters in a poke for you, sir. A poke. And then the guy behind me, he goes, she means a bag. Kenny says, and they don't even say y'all, they say yuns. That's true. First time for yuns? East Tennessee. It is insane. Uh, Kenny says e even East Tennessee is completely different language than the rest of Tennessee. Oh, my God. You are not kidding. Um, hold that thought. I must go pee again. I don't know what my deal is. Stand by. All right. <sighs> what a day. What a day. It's a great day. A wonderful day indeed, yes. Okay. Uh, thank you to uh, Rick again for being part of the show. Um, hmm. uh, let's head over to the city of Warren. No, before I do that, I wanted... Okay, this is even better. Um, someone sent me a link. I guess I was Googled. And then if you Google my name, usual things pop up. The website, Facebook, whatever it may be. Maybe some the, some post I did or the podcast. And then um, there's one that was sent to me. And I don't know what this is. But um, an organization called MN2S. Don't know what it stands for. But it says, want to book Eric Zane? Uh, there is an agent who, well, I'm just going to share it with you. Look at this. Eric Zane, podcast host, radio presenter, and comedian. <clears throat> this sounds like it was written by AI is known for his daily broadcast. The Eric Zane Show, where he covers news and human interest stories. Zane has been involved with the world of media for many years now, starting out in local TV, not true, and radio before landing a job as morning show host at the Journal Broadcast Group. He became the host and producer of the Free Beer and Hot Wings Morning Show, launching his career and becoming hugely popular with fans and listeners around the world. The show ran for more than 15 years, making Zane a household name and giving him a platform for his own projects. Now, none of that is true. Uh, what it should say is, uh, Zane was on with another uh, two other guys doing a morning show, and they got very, very lucky. And then after 16 years on the radio... Everybody was sick of him and told him to fuck off. And when it says making Zane a household name and giving him a platform for his own projects, <coughs> so ridiculous, not even close to being true. I just happened to stumble into doing a podcast one day on my cell phone. And here I am because no one else will even fucking call me uh, four years and uh, three months later. Alongside his work in radio, Zane also works as a sports announcer. Not true. I do PA. 
working with the Grand Rapids Griffins hockey team and the Grand Rapids Drive basketball team. He commentates on games and calls plays for both calls plays for both the Detroit Pistons. All right, guys, get around here. Uh, you take the ball, and then you're going to run the old picket fence there, get the ball to Jimmy Chitwood, and uh, shoot it. Uh, and the Griffins. All right, guys, uh, I want you to uh, uh, gang this guy, gang up on this guy, and beat the shit out of him. He's known as a talented sports broadcaster as well as a huge sports fan. Most ris- most recently, this season presenter and host has launched his own podcast called The Eric Zane Show, broadcast every weekday featuring special guests and regular segments. What the fuck? The show combines news coverage with comedy and has proved hugely popular with listeners. Right now, there's 32 people watching the show. (laughs) With Zane now expanding his portfolio to include merch and events. Zane's fan base continues to grow, and he now has listeners around the world well i guess that's technically true and then it says book by shannon elkabus and here's a contact and it says you can it says book eric zane and you click on it and you fill this out what the fuck is going on here um This is so strange to me. I don't know what is going on. There's a phone number there too. So I, uh, I, I'm going to call it today and see if I can work my way in to try to find out what the fuck is going on here. No, in this stupidity, I guess I have an agent now, huh? I mean, if I call up and say, yeah, I'd like to book Eric Zane. What I mean, I they have to let me know, right? Uh, it says our services, brand partnerships, influencer marketing, label services, PR services, merchandising, social media management. Chris says, try to book yourself and see how much you charge. All right, that is what I hey, I wanna I wanna book this guy, Eric Zane. He's the guy that says uh if he had to choose between getting a tattoo and take it to put on and taking off when he's five years old, or have his mom sit on his face, he'd rather have his mom sit Hey, I got a complaint about one of your clients, Eric Zane. He said he wants his mom to sit on his face. Kenny says, how do you go about getting an agent? You just Google yourself one day and find out someone already chose chose to be one for you. Yeah, I don't know what the fuck is going on. I've had one agent in my life and he died 10 years ago. What the fuck is going on here? That is uh, is strange. No doubt. All right. Uh, It might be. I wonder if it has something to do with Cameo. Do you think? Cameo.com slash Eric Zane if you want to uh want me to do a cameo for you. Twenty bucks. And you don't even have to call the agent that I don't have. Or maybe I do. Uh thank you to my friends at Dirty Donut Race for being part of the show. This is Michigan's premier gravel road race. Happens early June, I believe June third, in Martin, Michigan. Not that far from here. Uh, the distances are a 10-mile race if you're a newbie or you just want to pedal really fast for a short amount of time. 21, 41, and 61. The longer the race, the more donut stops. What the hell's a donut stop? What's well, called the dirty donut race. You're getting dirty because you're on gravel. You pull up to the donut stop. For every donut you eat when you're taking a break, you get five minutes taken off of your time. Uh, best times win prizes. It's a great event. Fun. Uh, family type of atmosphere. You got uh, uh, people all different walks participated in this one. Uh, super serious biker to just let's go have a good time biker. Uh, the Dirty Donut Race. Go to dirtydonutrace.com. 
Uh, use the code Zane23 at checkout. And you get 10 bucks off the race. By the way, when I was talking to Rick, Darla peed over there. I didn't want to yell at, yell at her and disrupt the thing, but it's kind of a bummer. It's only the uh, second or third accident we've had. I just got done talking about how great of a job she was doing, how, how far she was coming along. Fuck. Thank you to Berlin Raceway. There is racing this weekend. Uh, get your tickets, 14 bucks a pop. You can get, buy them online for 14 bucks a pop all the way up to like race time. If not, they're 17 at the gate at Berlin Raceway. Uh, in theory, you can get, let's say uh, you're a husband and wife and you have 10 kids under 15. You can theoretically get away with just 28 bucks to get everybody to get everybody in and be entertained. Parking is free. Mom and dad get the tickets for 14 bucks a pop, 15 and under free. Bring in a 12 by eight cooler. You can put all the snacks you want in it. Hell. Mom and dad both can bring in a 12 by 8 cooler. All the snacks you want in it. All the soft drinks you want. No booze, no alcohol. The booze they have for sale, very affordably priced. See the best local racing has to offer on the just shy of half mile track at Berlin Raceway. Get your tickets at berlinraceway.com. Thank you to the Kent County Health Department. If you need more information about the WIC program, immunizations, or personal health services, reach out to the Kent County Health Department. Accesskent.com slash health is their website. Uh, 616-632-7200 is their phone number. I've got an update about a young 12-year-old from the city of war. Attention, the city of war. The city of war. This is easy on 89.1 WPHS. PHS. We're going to tear it up. The favorite songs. I'm your, your favorite, favorite artist. artist. I want to see We've those got two lines. lines. 8 till 10 p.m. I'm going to want to see those phone calls. hear those phone calls. 751 FM 89 is the number. Let's hear your suggestions. Let's start it off right away. Right away. With Run DMC together forever. Oh, yo, man. Can I get some mic, man? One, two, one, two. And I'm safe. 89.1 WPHS. That was MC Shy D. Before that, we had Run DMC together forever. We're going to keep it going with my main man, LL Cool J. I'm bad. Uh, 751FM89, you talk to the main man. That was LL Cool J on 89.1 WPHS. It's 20 past the hour of 8 in the city of Warren. I want to see those phone lines lighting up at 751-FM-89. You ask for easy rhyme, you talk to the main man, DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince right here on 89.1 WPHS. All right. So that was like 14 or 15 when that was all going down. Uh, This kid here is 12. Chris says, oh, wait, I thought LL Cool J was the main man. Well, yeah, he is the main man, but I'm the main man, too. He's he's a main man, and I'm the main man, easy rhyme. I won't, I'm, I'm going to want to hear those phone lines. I'm going to want to see those phone lines lighting up. 89.1 WPHS with the... I don't know what the hiccup was there. 89.1, and it's public enemy. Not the public enemy. 89.1 WPHS with the public enemy. We're going to keep it right here with going to get yours. That was two in a row. Okay, so I made it sound like the song I'm talking out of 
was public enemy. But it wasn't. It was the fucking Beastie Boys. I fucked myself up. Song ending sounded like public enemy. It's the Beastie Boys. But I start with, hey, that's the public enemy. And then I'm like, oh, no, that's the Beastie Boys. Two in a row. And uh, here's public enemy. What? 89.1 WPHS with the public enemy. We're going to keep it right here with going to get yours. That was two in a row by the Beastie Boys. Rock hard and cheese on it. Now he is public enemy. What the fuck is it? So fucked up. One of you, I think it was uh, Tyler, said these clips never get old. There's always something new to park on on these fucking clips. Every fucking time. 89.1 WPHS with the public enemy. Anyway, this kid here in in the city of Warren, he went to the middle school that I went to, Lois Carter. But this kid's he is uh, he's so much better than me, than I was. All I was interested in was uh, you know rap music. Maybe I'll play with some Bionic Man toys or some shit. This kid, uh, watch this audio check, video check. Here we go. Just amazing. Thank you so much for joining us for 7 Action News at 6. I'm Carolyn Clifford. And I'm Mike Duffy. The scare on that bus happened in the Warren Consolidated School District as the driver... City of Warren. ...suddenly lost consciousness on the ride home. Yes, and... <laughs> ...drivers now recovering in the hospital. 7 Action News reporter Simon Shaykat shows us how the student knew what to do to prevent himself and others from... You see that? The bus driver's all fucked up. Uh, and, and something's going down. I don't know if it's seizing or what. Uh, it looks like he it looks like he's having a seizure or some shit getting hurt. Students on their way home from Carter Middle School on Wednesday expected a typical bus ride home, but instead witnessed a heroic act from one of their classmates in just a matter of seconds. As a seventh. Oh, my God. Look at that kid. He's taking charge at Carter Middle School in Warren. Dylan. There you go. That was a place. You see that they, they didn't show enough of it. Well, in Warren. Right here. I, I would walk. This is how my school day would start. I would walk right in that fucking door right there. And then Danny Donovan would beat the fuck out of me in the hallway. You see to the right of this, this main door right here. Remember the story I told you about when my dad went to the school to beat the shit out of Mr. Petrosella because he grabbed me and threw me against the locker. And my dad was so pissed off. It was in that office right to the right of the door in that building right there where that happened. Dylan Reeves knows it's not easy being a hero, but that's exactly what he became with no time. Look at the dudes coming unglued and then Dylan steps in. Despair. Very, very proud. I mean, this is overwhelming for all of us that this is national at this point. Dylan's actions, nothing short of remorse. Look at Dylan. He's got his arm around his sister like a bi- like a good big brother. That's awesome. This kid's going to be a future leader. Remarkable when his bus driver became lightheaded and passed out on their trip home for the day. Dylan wasting no time making the move to help. As the bus was traveling on Masonic Boulevard near Bunnert Road, video shows Dylan stepping to the front and helping bring it to a stop safely without incident. He stood up and he assessed the situation and eventually saw that the driver had passed out. This was an extraordinary act of courage and maturity on his part. He jumped up from his seat. Is this guy talking through his nose or some shit? It sounds like he's got two tongues. Maturity on his part. Maturity on his part. He jumped up from his seat. He jumped up from his seat. That's exactly what I'm hearing. Are you hearing what I'm hearing? Maturity on his part. He jumped up from his seat. From his seat, threw his backpack down, ran to the front of the bus, grabbed the steering wheel, and brought the bus to a stop. He's very. You imagine how much puss this guy, uh, this kid is going to get one day. Be attentive to his surroundings. And we asked him. I asked him, Dylan, how did you know what to do? How did you know how to drive that bus? And he said, I watch her do it every day. Oh, it's a chick. The bus driver's a chick. I thought that was a dude. 
He and his mother being publicly praised for the incredible response to an emergency, and other parents have also stepped up to thank Dylan. As a result of his courage, police and fire were able to quickly catch up to the bus and render aid, getting an ambulance for the driver. To if this kid was black, the cops would have shot him. To get help while getting kids onto another bus. Really That's a fucking joke. Come on now. Really been a great guy this year. He's yeah. come a long way. He's <clears throat> surprised us. With come a long way. Was he a, an idiot? Great grades and with his performances. At Did she just say he surprised us with great grades? Guy this year. He's yeah. come along. That's a weird thing to say about your kid. He's been a great guy this year. Render aid, getting an ambulance for the driver to get help while getting kids onto another bus. He's really been a great guy this year. He's yeah. come a long way. He's <clears throat> surprised us with great grades and with his performances at school with friends, with peers. Okay, so obviously the kid was a dipshit prior to this happening. And to do something like this just fills my heart it makes Can you imagine if she goes yeah we caught him fingering his sister my heart's give a beat reflecting on how uh it's fucking jokes how he stopped the bus dylan remains humble as the entire community acknowledges this was no small act of bravery macomb county executive mark hackle and warren police commissioner <laughs> bill dwyer also publicly acknowledging dylan as a hero who inspired talking about the cops i remember when the cop punched me in the face when i got arrested at the uh same Warren cops punch me right in the kisser. Here's us all from Warren. Simon Shaykat, 7 Action News. Isn't that amazing? And they even had the video uh, inside the bus for us to see. Oh, oh my God. They've got a camera in the bus. And Simon Shaykat, 7 Action News. Isn't that amazing? And they even had the video uh, inside the bus for us to see. I can what are, why are you impressed with technology, idiot? Just imagine those parents, man. They yeah. must be so proud. So emotional. Too. Oh, my God. <clears throat> Cole, where did you learn to drive a bus? Stealing them on Grand Theft Auto 5. Adam, Adam says kid has peaked. Chris says it's all downhill for this kid after this. Yeah, he's going to be a burnout. He'll be a druggie by ninth, day, by ninth grade. Mediocrity Dave says Zane coming in hot with the incest jokes today. Was that you I saw on, uh, that was you I saw on uh, fucking Reddit. New audience member, I appreciate you so much. <laughs> you know I'm punchy if I'm laughing at my own fucking jokes. What an asshole. Kenny says, oh, my God, no, Eric, you missed Tyler's comment. All right, I don't like to go back. That's always difficult. That kid is going to get so much tail, the teachers will probably start throwing it at him after this. That's all right. I like my incest joke better, frankly. You're right, though. It is a lot of incest today. Thank you to Lara in New Jersey. She sent me a story. By the way, if you ever have a story that you think is something I should cover, send it to me on email, eric at ericzancho.com. Uh, some chick in New Jersey lost control of her car and drove through somebody's front yard and put the car in the swimming pool. What the fuck? Audio check, video check. Cars don't belong in swimming cars. Christmas crack pools, but that was the case of cars. Cars. Christmas incredible. New York. Come to Oregon. Come to Oregon. And come here. To come here. Temperature. Yeah. Temperature. Algorithms. Inc Algorithms. Incredible. Crack. Crustacean. Crepes. Incredible. Four. Crust. Cripple. Cars. Christmas. Incredible. New York. Come to Oregon. Come here. Tim 
in Middlesex County at one house today, um, and uh, that was a big issue this morning. News 12 New Jersey's Tony Caputo with the exclusive details from East Brunswick. My wife was making us dinner, and she got me from my office saying there's a car in the booth. I was making a roadside bomb. This was the the end result now look closely at daniel's doorbell video a neighbor who's okay i love how they like okay now look closely and you can't see anything it's so shitty of an of an image and she got me from my office saying there's a car in the booth this was the end result now look closely at daniel's doorbell video a neighbor who spoke with us off camera owned up to it she says she did indeed accidentally drive her BMW right into Daniel's yard and into a swimming pool. I did indeed accidentally drive through the yard and into a swimming pool. You see the white vehicle there. Now keep an eye on the... No, we don't see the white vehicle. We don't see shit, you dick, because it's so blurry. Middle right section <clears throat> of the video. You'll see the white BMW swing around again in Daniel's yard. Uh, uh, how is this video so bad? I thought those ring doorbell cameras... Are, are like the fucking James Webb telescope. Uh, how could this be so shitty of an image? There you go. And it hits a bump, turns right back in towards the swimming pool, crashes through the fence, and then eventually right into the pool. Everyone was screaming and... Everyone was creaming? Is that what he said? Everyone was screaming and... He did say creaming. I think she almost ran over her sister or something like that. That's what they were saying. The woman I yelled Allah Akbar and uh, that called it a day. Also told us she almost struck her sister, adding she herself had to be pulled out of her car through the sunroof. By the way, all these jokes today I would have been fired for. Before they removed it from the water. As long as she's okay, that's all that matter, you know. I'm sure insurance is going to take care of everything, but as long as she's okay. And thank God she came out fine, so... That's all that matter. No, I would be so. That's that's this guy's yard. So now his whole yard is fucked up, and he's got a great attitude about it. You know, spoken like a true neighbor <sighs> in East Brunswick. Tony Caputo. By the way, I, this is why he's not that upset. Look at that shitty pool. Oh my god. Okay, this thing hasn't been taken care of in probably fifteen years. That cover's been on there. Wow. That is an overgrowth. Okay. And then this piece of property that we're looking at here in Middlesex County, East Brunswick, it's pro that house is, would probably go for like $30 million there. News 12, New Jersey. Thank God she is fine. But did you hear that sound when that car went into the pool? That what the fuck is wrong with these reporters? The other one was the same thing. I can't believe we got a camera shot. And then this one. She is fine, but did you hear that sound when that car went into the pool? That would have scared anybody. What the fuck? East Brunswick police are still investigating. No summonses were issued at the scene. Those decisions will be made once the investigation is finished. Uh, the real B team on New Jersey 12 News, I see. Holy shit. All right. Uh... Bob says, yeah, he's okay with it because the insurance is going to make his property nicer than it was. It can't get any worse. How did she crash? They, they didn't do any reporting here. You're right. Cole writes, how did she crash? On the phone, medical issue. <laughs> then he adds, just being a woman driver. Chris says, now insurance is going to pay to fix up the value, fix up the pool. Kuiper says, the driver's house is definitely going to be blown up by this guy. All right. Advertise on the Eric Zane Show podcast. Send me an email, eric at ericzaneshow.com. It's that easy. I'll take care of the rest. Thank you to Sarah Honda Granville. These guys are on, excuse me, Kennewa Avenue, just north of 44th Street. Test drive a brand new Honda today. They also, if you want to uh, drive out in a car today, brand, uh, not a brand new, a certified pre-owned car, they have the largest uh, selection of certified pre-owned uh, vehicles in Michigan. Sarah Honda Granville.
Thank you again to Rick from TC Paintball. We'll be there Sunday. You can still make it out. Um, just let me know you're coming or just show up. I don't care. It's going to set you back 35 bucks. You get the gun, you get the mask, you get the paint shots. You can buy more paint if you want. Uh, just wear crappy clothes and you're good to go. We'll take care of the rest. I'll be there. You can shoot me, me, the Honduran, and a bunch of Mexicans uh, having a great time. <clears throat> Excuse me. T-shirts are on sale for 37% off again. My T-shirt provider puts these on sale um, whether I want them on sale or not. That is so fucked up. But I'm at their mercy. I make like a dollar a T-shirt. This is such a pile of shit deal. But I wouldn't have it any other way. Because I don't have any inventory laying around and they take care of all the logistics. Chris says they must be working with your agent. Look at, you can get my t-shirt for 16 bucks. Now I think you're going to pay five or six for shipping, but you go to ericzaneshow.com or ericzane.com, click merch and you're done. Then pick a t-shirt and you can actually... When it comes to the t-shirts, um, in addition to just a standard t-shirt for 16 bucks, like this dear meathead one. All right. Classic T is 16. If it says try blend t-shirt, I guess that's extra soft was 29. Now 22. You don't need that shit. Just get the classic. The V-neck. Only queers wear those. Freemium t-shirt. I don't know. 22. Heavyweight t-shirt. 17. Eco t-shirt. This one is made out of old pop bottles. I'm not even kidding you. And organic. It's like made out of dandelions and uh, pop bottles. $21. All different colors. You see, you're like, oh, no, I want this color. You can, you know, mix and match. Do whatever you want. It's a do whatever you want weekend. When you get the classic t-shirt, you get to choose from all these colors. I think my favorite is the maroon or the cardinal. I like that one too. Okay. Get 35% off. EricZaneShow.com. Click merch. Um, we're getting a lot of, uh, suggestions. I see another suggestion for the NFK t-shirt. Boy, I don't know. I cannot run the risk of him being on a t-shirt and one, and then the off chance that he sees it. Oh no, no, no. Please no. Uh, Irvine's auto repair, Grand Rapids hybrid and EV 616-532-6600. Get your cars fixed from Irvine's. They're the best. They're in West Michigan. ER Vines, ervines.com. Heating and cooling, A and E heating and cooling. 616-516-8579. Get your AC tuned up. From her, uh from A and E heating and cooling. You need that done before you turn on the AC. Schedule today, 616-516-8579. Okay. The asshole of the day. Yesterday, it was Ted Lasso, which, by the way, I heard from uh, Don, Don O, and he said, I was listening to the show today, and this is after, you know, Kenny gets on, he's like, oh, man, it's such a good show. It's just, it's, it's not a comedy. It's not a drama. It's just, I just love it. I, I mean, he was uh, just gushing about that show. And I've heard other people do it. Don all writes, just listening to t- today's podcast, FYI, Ted Lasso sucks. I know I'm going to hate that fucking show. Oh, it's going to suck so bad. 
Uh, Linda says, where's Megan been lately? I'm not sure. I think she's super busy right now with the kids. Uh, and then where's Sarah been? Sarah has changed hours. She works at uh, a place that manufactures medicine, and she can't listen while she works. It's a bummer. I miss her. Sarah's been on Ben and Eric lately, but we haven't seen Megan in ages. Uh, I talked to her because I thought the same thing. I go, hey, how you doing? What's up? Where you been? Oh, I've been busy. Okay. Asshole of the day today. Oh, my God. It's got to be Ted Lasso again. I'm kidding. Uh, I give it to former ESPN reporter Molly, Molly Rivera as your asshole of the day. Congrats, Marley. The week is looking up for you. Uh, For my dogs, for the queen of the forest, for the NFK, I thank you. Whoops, that was loud. I thank you for being part of the Eric Zane Show podcast. Kenny says, what about the kid abuser parents? Oh, yeah, you're right. Let me, uh, let me redo that. I just kind of saw Marley, and I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, we got to keep things on the up and up here. Uh, The only thing that could tattoo parents are your asshole of the day. There you go. Kenny gets a nomination for not making a pick on whether or not... If he had to choose between his mom giving him a tattoo and taking it off his body or his mom sitting on his face when he was five, he would not choose, which we all know he would choose uh, his mom sitting on his face. Who wouldn't? I would prefer pleasure over pain. Okay. Have a good one, folks. Till next time. Bye-bye. Guys, got hair loss? I know what you're thinking. Should I shave my head, comb it over, wear a hat? Just stop. This is in 1970. Keep your hair and your confidence because Bosley, America's number one hair restoration experts, can give you your real hair back permanently. Check them out today because they're giving away an absolutely free information kit and a free gift card for anyone who goes to bosley.com. Dude, you don't have to look like your dad because this isn't your dad's hair loss treatment. People all over the country trust Bosley because they're ahead of the curve. They use the latest technology to give you your real hair back. And the best part? Bosley's permanent solution is protected by the Bosley Guarantee. Let Bosley show you for free how awesome your hair could look with an absolutely free information kit and a gift card for $250 off. Go to bosley.com. That's B-O-S-L-E-Y.com. Bosley.com. Take as little as three minutes to see if you could save on motorcycle insurance with Progressive. Come on, you've spent more time than that thinking about helmets with faces on them. I should get a new helmet. Ooh, maybe I'll get one of those ones that looks like a face with painted teeth and eyebrows, you know? Oh, that always looks so cool. People are like, whoa, is that a person with two faces? Oh, no, it's a helmet. And one face. Get a quote in as little as three minutes at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates.